Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cherry on Top's third episode of Banana Split Discussion. I'm your host, Pave, the passionate pomegranate of Cherry on Top. Hey, it's Mango, or Mang, if you want to keep it simple. As you may have noticed, our usual host, Lime, is not here with us. He's busy taking a vacation at the moment, so he cannot join us. Well, it's more like he's painting the town. Or he's flipping that as we speak. We just have to get by without him. At least we have Editor Lime with us. Say hi! It's silent. Anyways. Also, before we get into the meat of this discussion, I wanted to apologize for going off schedule and for not having a video last week. This time right now is really busy for the team and we have real life engagements to focus on at the time. We hope to have a video released later this month, but I hope you will be understanding if we don't have a new video until October. And also forgive us for being late to the other two Pokemon Scarlet and Violet news drops that happened earlier. We'll cover our thoughts on those here as well, so you won't miss out on what we think about Cyclozar and Grafii. I'd also recommend subbing to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos from us, whenever they get updated. Okay, okay. Self-promotion. We love it, we love it. <laughs> Someone <laughs> has to do it. Anyways, enough housekeeping. Let's get this started with our question of the day. Mango, will you do the honors? Okay. Which of these three stories seems to be your favorite so far? Well, for me so far, we'll go really in depth on the three stories, you know, when we get to that section. But so far, my favorite story um, from the stuff, the information we have is the Starfowl Street story. Because out of like the other three stories, where the traditional story will be, where I analyze, you know, themes and everything like that. So I'm more excited for that because I know that's probably where all like the meat of like the theming and story will be um, what about you mango personally i think yeah i think the starfall street quest seems to be the most interesting because it's the one that that's gonna move the story at least like the other two is just oh we're just gonna do the same oh eight gems and then you go to champion or what is this the other one like help look for legendary pokemons or titans yeah the, the titans with arvin yeah so it's a, it's the most interesting so far to me so mm -hmm. i mean there's probably like story elements and like theming within those other two as well it's just when i think of like a pokemon game and like when it comes to like a good story, it usually ends up evolving like non the champion and like non a side quest, you know? It's like yeah. usually like battling the evil team and like with the other characters, etc. Like, I guess things, you know, like could surprise me and we find out the Arvin is the one with that, but like <laughs> usually it's like, like with the evil team in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's move on to the new Pokemon. What are they, Mango? The Pokemon this time around, we have Cyclozar, a normal and dragon type. Grafii is a normal and poison type. Cloth is a rock type. Armorogue is a fire and psychic type. And Serilage, Serilage? Ledge? Fire and ghost type. I think we should get the Kufan out of the room. Uh, oh. And... <laughs> and realize that Cyclozar looks very similar to the legendaries. Very similar. Hmm. I wonder if there's a connection here. We, we, uh, Cherry on Top do follow the leaks and everything, so we know everything, but for the sake of people who don't follow the leaks or whatever, we will try to not mention what is said there, but suffice to say, Cyclozar is related to the legendaries in some way. I think most everyone has realized that. Yeah, especially because uh, in the trailer, everyone is using Cyclozar and you're using a legendary, so. Mm -hmm. And I like that it's like a you know, cool touch where it's like, that's what they ride. And also we won't stand out as much because it's like, Oh, they're also writing Pokemon too, so it's not like, what are they writing? You know, that's yeah. what I was wondering, where it's like, 
when we're writing this like legendary when people be like that's odd yeah it, and it it makes sense because um cyclozar is pretty common in the region mm -hmm. paldia because yeah. everyone seems to own one in their house in their house and yeah like a, a symbiotic that's no one you're so smart <laughs> So, um, I know we have a controversy because I love Grafaii, but I know you don't like Grafaii. I, so. I don't, I don't like Grafaii. It just, it just doesn't look good. Listen, uh, it has colors. It is cute. It is, you know, a painting monkey. It doesn't look good to me is, is what I'm saying. Which is fair, which is fair. Mm -hmm. And then for the other three Pokemon, like we just got introduced to them. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Cloth, I'm but not... I love Armor Rouge and Surge. Like, it just, they just look iconic. I'm more so like leaning towards Violet with Surge because like, it looks kind of cool, <laughs> but I love Psychic types. So it was, really, I'm just over here like, I love both of them equally. Yeah, um, cloth. I'm on the fence about. I don't know how. Like it, it just looks off to me. I think I don't know. I've I've said it before, but like the artwork to model this generation seems to be like a little bit. It's not good to me. It doesn't look good to me. Like it doesn't. I, I can get what you mean. Yeah, it's not translating well, and I feel like that's like the issue with making Pokemon too realistic but in my opinion I like Serilidge the most out of the three I had actually like we'll, we'll see um, I'll talk about it later when we get to our like update teams or whatever but I definitely had to like sw swap things around in order to use uh, Serilidge yeah oh wait it's it's like Violet exclusive right yeah it's I'm Violet guessing. exclusive and Armor Rouge is uh, Scarlet I love psychic types, and most mm -hmm. if they reveal any more psychic types, there's gonna be a lot of competition for sure. You know. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just the number one psychic type fan. So if we're done talking about the Pokemon. We can move on to the new characters slash okay. team star. You know, the people of this region. The people. Um, we'll start with Team Star. So. Team Star was formed by the school's most rebellious students. It is made up of several squads. Each squad is led by its own boss, each with their own base scattered across the Paldea region. These class-cutting delinquents cause trouble for all those around them, giving the academy students and teachers a hard time by disturbing the peace and using pushy recruitment tacket, tactics. March up to their bases and face off against the troublemaking Team Star. I think what our guesses was correct, I, we mentioned it last episode with the tweet that we uh, talked about where like they'd be like kind of like a biker or a car gang, but there is that also that element of like bullies too, you know, where like they're troublemaking students. Yeah, Team Star is such an interesting name to me. It is too. Like I, I wasn't expecting that type of name. Yeah, especially because I was expecting more of the lines like a color or something related to like Scarlet or Violet or something. True, but like, hmm. if you think about it, like for Sword and Shield, it was Team Yell. What does that have to do with a Sword and uh, Shield? I mean, yeah. And they weren't even really that important to the story, so. <laughs> There's like some teams that go theming wise with like the games or whatever, but like, yeah. Team Skull doesn't relate to like so the sun and moon, you know? It doesn't, yeah. But the actual evil team what is it aether, aether well not aether. really well not really aether i guess yeah no they're for like the environment yeah like, but, they, know, but they they didn't really target uh Sogway or lunala i mean lucy was more after <laughs> the no, lego yeah, yeah yeah i do like their little hand like gesture like the little star thing mm -hmm. that shows up as a gold star that that's very cute of them it'll be interesting to see if like if they'll actually be, if they'll be like Team Yellow or Team Skull or if there's like a fake out where there's like a bigger vil uh, villain mm -hmm. or um, like what all the bosses are and everything. Like, 
I kind of like them because I I don't think we've ever had like a bully evil team, you know. I'm wondering how like they managed to collect these rebellious students to form their own basically gang. The way they worded it, it seems like they're still part of the class. They're just rebelling against it, I guess. I think, like I said, it's kind of for me what it seems like from the trailer and like the description that like they basically like while also having this little like car motif also is mainly like a like a bully like bullies mm -hmm. basically and bullies go to the school for the most part most bullies go to school so well we can move on to talk about the specific team star person which is uh mila who, contrary to what people think, is not the overall boss of Team uh, Star. She is just the like a commander of one of the crews. So Mila is the boss of Team Star's fire crew, the Sh Shardar Squad. As the team's best all-rounder, Mila fixes any and every problem thrown her way, though her methods are heavy-handed. She leaves a forceful and gruff impression, but her steadfast devotion to completing anything she puts her mind to has earned her the trust of her teammates. Adding another name that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Shardar Squad. Shadar? Shadar. Shadar. Oh, is it Shadar? Look, I don't know. Pokemon make easier names to say challenge failed yet again. I was like, Cheddar or something. I, I don't know. First Terrastal, now Shadar. Terrastal, Terrastalize, I hate that word. <laughs> Anyways, I love her so much. She has such a like, unique design, you know, has a very more grunge rocker kind of like appearance. And I am so for it, you don't understand. And also like the way that she probably made her outfit from the school uniform because she has like the badge of the school and also like her collar is of the color of the school like i could just imagine her being like i don't want to wear this uniform tears it up and makes up a new outfit and you know that gives me a lot of like happiness yeah she she made the look like it's couture you know yeah she, she's like i'm a fashion designer as well mm -hmm. it'll yeah. be interesting to see because they did mention that she's the boss of one of the crews like what the other crews would be and also how like if it's just like that one area and like once we complete that area she'll never appear again that would be sad i would, <laughs> I, would uh... hope that, I would hope that it'd be like other games where like the commanders show up everywhere or like you just see them other places even if you don't battle them again just being like hey i'm gonna go it's you again <laughs> The nearby squad is, you know, I told them all about you. They can't, you know, they're ready to, like, beat you up. I like her design a lot. Out of everyone so far that's been revealed, she has, like, the most interesting. Uh, but I'm, like, a sucker for fire type, so I just, I just like the fire type. What is it? Like, leaders, champions, like, admins? I like them a lot. But not team player, yeah. not team player. Yeah, same. Do you have anything else? Nope, anything so we can move on to the next character. Okay, so for our next character, we have the chairman of the Pokemon League, Gita. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Yeah, if her name is... I mean, her name's not similar in, in the Japanese name. It's a little bit different. Uh -huh. But I would think it follows, like, the hard G, so Gita. Gita, yeah. She operates in Paldia's Pokemon gyms. Uh, among the region's champions, she reigns supreme as the most skilled trainer of all. Though mild-mannered, Gita still has a commanding presence, and it's said that anyone who calls themselves a Pokemon trainer looks up to her. It appears that she is looking for exceptional young talents capable of conquering the Pokemon League. So... I love her, actually. Same. Like she just yeah. has this like mystic, like mystical, like the dark blues yes. and just like the big hair. Like, mm -hmm. please marry me, queen. Oh my god. <laughs> like <laughs> me in love with every female. <laughs> oh my character. god. 
<laughs> we did new. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> she just has this aura to her. Like, I like I like I like her so much actually. And I love she and Mila are like the human characters basically are the only char- the models that I've loved so far that transitioned well into the games. Yeah, the models look so good for the human characters. Yeah, I like, like them a lot. It's like, back to Mila again. Yeah. When you see her eyes up close, they have such good detail to them. Like the color of her mm-hmm. iris, like it just pops out and it looks so like good. And I'm like, that's all I could notice through the trailer. It's like, oh my God, their eyes look so good. Yeah. Like, they look so detailed, like they have like the little lines in the iris, the, like you know, like those little like lines of color that we have. And I'm yep. like, I'm, I'm, I'm like wowed. So I'm assuming she's the champion, like, like she's the champion of all champions. So she'll be like the boss battle. I'm hoping, because yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. it's gearing up that she will be like the main champion because she's like she's among the group of champions which we established like i think last time that there were like a group of champions who have the champion rank she is the most skilled like yeah. so it's setting up that she's probably going to be the main champion i don't i don't think that's like completely out of nowhere but uh huh and i mean i'm a big fan so we i mean i'm always a big fan of like female champions so it's like okay yeah, ex- except Diantha. Okay. <laughs> maybe if she had more to do with her story, maybe, we're loving more. Maybe, exactly. Okay. Anyways, uh, if we're done talking about uh, Gita, we can move on to the gym leader we just got introduced to, which is Brasius. Brasius is the gym le- leader of Artisan, a town that's alive with flowers and art. He specializes in uh, using grass type Pokemon. And is known as the Virgin Virtuoso. Ooh, the alliteration. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gym leader Brasius treats Pokemon battles as works of art and is always search of artistic quality, using his gym test to help judge a trainer's aesthetic sensibilities. His piece de resistance. Okay, he's French. <laughs> Surrendering Sunflora is a statue installation depicting adorable sunflora with somber expressions. Just what this sunflora is surrounding to is a topic of debate among connoisseurs. We love a fancy art king. Mm-hmm. I will uh, say he's my least favorite character so yes. far. Maybe yeah. it's just because of the official art, because in-game he looks so much better. Uh-huh. But like, the official art, like, I don't know, the face just looks very weird mm-hmm. to me. Like, it, it's like the one official art so far where I'm like, this really does not look good. Uh, yeah, I'll have to agree with you. Um, I just, I'm not a big fan of like, he just looks sickly to me, like, but... I don't know yeah. what they were doing with the official art of that one. Maybe. Yeah, but <laughs> I just know he's gonna be like the most popular between like, the fans who just love like, the sickly looking characters. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know like, there was a fan base. <laughs> no, no, no. There is, there is, there is a fan base of people like that. You know, who was like Pierce? People love Pierce because he looked sickly and he was like a rocker type. So, what about Wally? <laughs> Wait, Wally? Because remember that was his whole story. Oh, line, like, oh, sick, yeah, but like I don't know if pe- people like him that much. But I mean, he did. Like, Wally and Brassius are both green. Well, we should wait. Should we move on or wait? Something well, we, we barely talked about Brassia, so oh, okay. But I do love that, like, so far that the with the two gym leaders that we have, they both had like a little like side job that kind of relates back to their type. You know, we had uh, Grusha with being a snowboarder and him being an ice type, and now Brassius is like an art uh, artist who uses like you know flowers and um. Is like the verdant virtual which is verdant is green so it yeah. like relates back to like him being an artist relates back to like he's tight you know yeah and also using some flora <laughs> uh, and i've always liked that about like matching their other occupation to being a gym leader like it makes it more fun you know yeah yeah and it gives like i don't think gym leaders do gym leading as their only job it makes sense that they would that 
they would have like a hobby or just like a side job, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially for an artist, like, you know, you know that artists don't make a lot. They're not know? gonna be making a lot of money, let's be honest. <laughs> Wait, are we um, gonna talk about his terrestrialized Dudo Wudo layer or no? Oh, right, yeah. That's, I was so happy, you don't understand. Because like, we were like, hopefully they would use it and not be like uh, megas for only like two trainers using uh -huh. the X and Y. So it's glad that we saw that, hey, the gym leaders do, and also they would use it in a way that's like, here's this Pokemon that normally would not be on a grass type team, but it has the theming because, you know, Sudowoto is literally like a big tree. Yeah. And then it would become a grass type. Yeah, yeah. My only thing I wonder is, if that would be the thing or whether there will be like a pokemon that is like a fire type whatever but then they terrestrialize it to a different type to like you know catch you off guard you know yeah because if they all just change the type that the gym leaders are i think it would be kind of stale in a way uh -huh. i'd like to see some variety where like they do like oh there is this like for example if there's like a fire type gym leader i'm about to say there is they had a fire type but then they changed it to like let's say like electric to combat like water types or whatever that's what i thought the new mechanic was gonna be like oh so you i specialize in po poison type but actually my terrestrial type is like bug because like it's trying to because yeah i thought i thought it was I, i'm hoping it's gonna be like that later half in the game but i feel like since the gym is in any order i feel like it's not so yeah it would be i would like to see like maybe like some of them do the typing you change the typing that they are but mm -hmm. i would like to see just some variety where a couple of them change out of the type you know yeah to like because, uh, a weakness that you know because i think that would help out to make that would make the bows more interesting in the long run and i feel like it'll get you off guard because sometimes like pokemon games they introduce the mechanic but you're like oh but you forget about it because it's only like specific during like oh mega evolution or you could use it during only gym battles yeah i mean mm. time will tell to see whether how they incorporate it but just the fact that they are using it is already a plus from yeah it's already a plus x and y with megas yeah <laughs> Anyways, we should do the three stories now. The school that you have enrolled in hosts a special independent study project. The theme of this assignment is a treasure hunt. Explore the world and seek out your very own treasure. Three stories will be woven into your adventure while traversing the sprawling Paldea region. Along Victory Road, you will go to gyms in different locations in order to achieve champion rank. On the path of legends, you can join Arvid in search of rare ingredients. And in Starfall Street, you'll challenge Team Star, a group of delinquents causing trouble for the school. These stories are set in an open world, so where you go is all up to you. A world team with Pokemon and people to meet is waiting for you. Traverse the Baldea region wherever your heart desires. So for one of the story paths you can take in the game is Victory Road. There are eight Pokemon gyms in different locations throughout Paldea, all managed by the Pokemon League. If a trainer makes their way to the gyms and defeats all the gym leaders then, and then passes the champion assessment at the Pokemon headquarters, they can earn the coveted champion rank. After accepting the most suggestion to become a champion rank trainer, you, will, you too will be able to visit eight Pokemon gyms scattered across the region. Well, the least to talk about here because like they've already talked about it last trailer and everything but like hmm. it's it's just and also it's a pretty standard collect the gym badges become champion storyline like we have this in every game so like there's not much to really talk about and also we already suspected that Nimona would be a part of this storyline because she is the battling rival yeah so it's pretty straightforward just the same going through eight gyms and then going to the champion nothing out of the ordinary so far yeah yeah so we don't really don't have much to talk about because that one is literally very straightforward mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so now we have starfall street where you go to take on each squad's base team stars many grunts will send out a relentless barrage of pokemon to get in your way by defeating enough of the grunts as pokemon within a given time limit you'll be able to challenge their boss to a battle 
Engage in auto battles. A convenient feature that's new to these titles to overcome the un unending barrage of Team Star's grunts and their Pokemon. Once you overcome the waves of Team Star grunts, their boss will appear in a custom car called the Starmobile. It seems that during your Pokemon battles and these with these bosses, the Starmobile itself will get in your way. Take down each squad's boss by defeating their party Pokemon and their Starmobiles. The fact that they did not mention Penny here, even though we feel like that's probably where she's going to be. I'm like, why did they not mention Penny? Mm -hmm. Because it seems obvious that, like she's probably skipping school or not going to school as much because she's probably either being bullied by Team Star or she's a part of Team Star. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's like she has a very significant story section in the Starfall Street and they just don't want to reveal any of it because then it will spoil a lot. Because that's conveniently who was not mentioned in this trailer. Arvin is yeah, mentioned, Nimona is. is mentioned, but not Penny. Why? Yeah, so I feel like it makes sense that all the rivals connected to the three routes. So, I mean, I'm hoping it's gonna be Penny. I feel like she's the most mysterious one of the rivals so far. And I feel like she'll be part of this story to fill in the gaps. Plus, like, we know more about Nimona and Arvin uh -huh. than we do about Penny now. She's skipping school, so, like, I, I'm gonna agree with you that she might be getting bullied by, what is it, Team Star? There, it could be plot twist that she's actually a part of it. And she's, I mean, you know, hopefully. So far, I think it's being established that because she's shy and, you know, the same age as us, that it's leading that she's probably the one being bullied. But, you know, plot I mean, twist could happen. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope it's a plot twist. I mean, hopefully it's not like another Marnie situation. Also, if you look at the map, there's different colored flags for like the section. Mm -hmm. So like you can probably see what the, you know, the types of the bosses might be. So like we have like the red, purple, yellow, black, and pink flags. I think it's obvious that the red one will probably be the fire one. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could even guess the other types of the other ones if they go by flag color. So purple might be like poison or psychic. Yellow is probably like electric or, you know, I guess some other type that's also yellowish. Um, black is probably most likely dark. <laughs> <laughs> and pink maybe being fairy. Maybe also being poison too because it has that little pinkish vein. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. It would be really um, fun if there's no overlap with the different gym leaders or whatever. Because if there's like a fire type gym leader and a fire type, you know, thing, mm. that'd be weird. But there is like 18 types, so there's probably likely that we won't have any overlap. Yeah, um, I mean, Pokemon's really good with like, when it, not overlapping types. So like, everyone has their own special specialization i mean let's see marnie there was like two dark types marnie and pierce in sword and shield and then we also had bead and opal who were were fairy types but like they passed on the gym leader name to your rivals mm -hmm. so i mean it makes sense story-wise plus we don't we don't have a lot of dark types so i'm i'm just like okay Two, four, and to one. Be, and, yeah. yeah, and to be fair, Bead started out as like a psychic trainer, and then, and even when you face him as like the fairy type successor, he still has psychic types. Like he yeah. has like Glory and Rapidash and uh, Hatterene, which was his main Pokemon before he became a fairy type. So it was yeah. already like kind of hinting that he would be like a fairy type, you know, mm -hmm. gym leader. Anyways, so before we move on, also there's the auto battle function. But we oh. couldn't fit into any other section, and we didn't want to make a unique section for it, so I included it within the Team Star one, because it seems obvious that the auto battle function will be mainly used in this, like, little section. Like, yeah, you can use it anywhere else, but it might seem that it's important for you to use the auto battle function within the Team Star sections, because there's going to be, like, a lot of Pokemon attacking you, and you only have a set time limit to get oh. rid of them. Oh, that's auto battles. I thought it was like an in-game thing. 
Like, I don't, you know, I don't it, know. It seems don't like know it is an in game thing where, like, it battles for you and gets items for you, which is, uh. you know, for some people, like, it's very reminiscent of, like, Legends Arceus where you could send Pokemon out to get items oh, and okay. battle, whatever. But now it's just evolving with it where it's like, it'll stay out in that feature until you call it back, basically. Oh, it was okay, okay. So yeah, it seems like the from here because it says by defeating enough Pokemon within the time limit, you'll be able to get the boss in battle. So in order to get the boss, you have to defeat all the Pokemon. And depending if it's rather like, and from what I trailer, it seems like there's a good amount of Pokemon attacking you. So it seems obvious that you're going to need to do the auto battle function. Maybe maybe with friends too. Maybe like because there's like multiple Pokemon. Maybe you need like you can challenge it with your friends. Uh. Um, so that way you could actually face the boss. Because if you don't do the auto battle function, you might not have enough time to get rid of all the Pokemon. Okay, yeah. Please tell me it's just like... Like, the fact that it's auto battles and that it's like automatic, I feel like... I hope it's not too long. I also just hope that they don't just use like random moves or like... Not I, I, I hope, really hope I that hope. Auto Battle is like tuned to be like please, please be good. <laughs> please, oh my, like was it the raid battles in Sword and Shield where you can't even control your NPCs moves? Please, please, please don't. Please like, don't eh. do setup moves <laughs> constantly or do non-effective moves. Just please, oh if God. I have to insert myself in, super effective moves, go. <laughs> Like, forget the, the function, I'll do it myself. I don't care about the time. <laughs> I'll find a way. <laughs> so, our next section is talking about the Path of Legend. This section deals with Arvin's research into healthy recipes for Pokemon, has led him to seek out rare ingredients called the Herba Mystica, which are said to immediately store health once eaten. Herba Mystica are extremely rare herbs that can be only found in Paldia. They are guarded by Titan Pokemon, which are bigger and stronger than ordinary Pokemon, making these rare herbs more difficult to obtain. What's more, a number of these Titan Pokemon have already been sighted in the region. Since Arvin isn't good at Pokemon battles, he'll be asking you to help out, and will even offer to cheat you to some of his handmade dishes if the two of you succeed in obtaining these rare herbs. Drive back tough opponents and gather the Herba Mystica together with Arvin. So, I like how, because they established that Arvin is like good with Pokemon battles, that like that's how we'll be helping them, is that we'll be probably the main people battling the Titans. Yeah. And like maybe we might support, be like, go, go! Yeah, I'm out of like the three stories so far, I feel like his is the weakest one. You're just like looking for herbs, I guess. I feel like how they incorporate, like, for example, with the three stories, they incorporated stuff that people liked in previous games. Obviously, we have, like, the Victory Road, mm -hmm. and then we have, like, the Evil Team stories, and then now we have, like, the thing that's, like, from Alola, where it's, like, the totem Pokemon. Yeah. And Because people did, like, the little totem challenges, you know, and, like, facing uh... a big Pokemon. I like how they we have that within one game now, basically. Mm -hmm. And I wonder with the storyline whether there will be like how it is with the totem challenges where there's like a little challenge before we face the Titan. It seems like there is where like maybe you have to face lower level of that Pokemon. Like, like in the trailer you, you face like cloths. So it seems like maybe there might be a little challenge where like oh you have to face like a lower level cloths and then the big Titan one comes out where it's like, hey, you're beating up my friends. I'm gonna attack you now. I mean, I'm glad that they're bringing back the feature of having different sizes, but I feel like it's only just the Titan Pokemon. I'm hoping it's not. Another question I do have with this storyline is like, I originally thought that the third storyline would involve the Terrastal mechanic. Oh. I wonder if the herbs are related to the Terrastal mechanic, where like maybe the herbs are like ter like terrestrial boosted or whatever and they maybe like boost up maybe your terrestrial like it makes it stronger you mm -hmm. know or something or like you activate it within your pokemon or if the herbs are what changes the terrestrial type or whatever 
or just the terrestrial mechanic has its own mini storyline within the other two or it's not related at all to any storyline yeah hmm. i mean i mean we'll we'll probably have to still do it probably to progress the story they said you could do the stories in, in like whatever way you want so theoretically you could just do the other two storylines or do one storyline and the other storyline and the other storyline or yeah i wonder if you don't do one of the storylines like they'll all meet up in the like in the climax of the story and like oh but you didn't do this part of the story in this section so you can't have that ending or something so I mean, that's what i would think is that like there'd be yeah. like some point in each of the three stories where you can't continue unless you do the other two or whatever and it's like hey we're not fully ready to handle whatever's happening you should get stronger by you know doing some other things anyways uh since we went through all the details of the three stories i think it's time to talk about like any theories or expectations we have I know for me, I have a lot of thoughts about Team Star, as it was probably obvious in the other sections. And there's kind of a reason for it, because now I have actually Japanese text that I translated that I could talk about. We, oh. I couldn't do it last chapter because it was a dialogue over and it said it wasn't important, so... And then the first trailer had very standard translations. And it's in the case for this time, because... For most of it, it's pretty one-to-one, -one, where it's like, not like a direct translation, but, you know, it's given the differences in languages, it's similar. But the only differences I found was with the Team Star and Mila's dialogue, where it was a lot gruffer and a lot rougher. And I wanted to talk about that because I think it's very interesting. Because the Japanese text really establishes that they are bullies. And it's really hard to translate that over into English because it has a lot of more Japanese uniqueness to it. So for the first line, um, is said by like a, the one of the grunts. Excuse my Japanese pronunciation. I'm really rusty in my Japanese. So, Adeshira nakukomo wataru stardom. Kimi wa shiteru yone which directly translates to, like, we, I, Team Star, who can make a crying child laugh, do you know of us? And it was important to me because, like, one, I'm used to Japanese pronouns, but it has, like, a raw after it. I had to look it up. It said that adding raw after a pronoun makes it very rude and hostile and kind of oh. disparages the person that you're talking to. Um, and it's usually used along with like very hostile or harsh words. It's kind of really obvious that like in the Japanese, they're really laying down that they are mean. They will say like very, very harsh things. And the Nakukomo Wadaru Stardom is kind of like a little play within this like Japanese idiom, which is Nakukomo Damaru, which is intimidating enough to quieten a crying child. So, I changed the wording around because they used Wadaru, which is to laugh, instead. So, it seems like they're, like, trying to make themselves intimidating. And, um, and it kind of fits with the English text kind of using kid and, like, disparaging you. But it's just more unique to the Japanese text where it's harder to translate. Because our equivalent of what they're probably saying would probably be them using curse words, which... It's a kid's game, so we can't do. <laughs> and then the second text, which is Nanimo no kaga ni no horo o wakimeresu Ajito ni kachikonde kimashita Which is, someone does not know one's place. Everyone get inside slash crowd the hideout. Also was more unique to me because I never had zu used after a verb. Which is kind of similar to like the negative form, nai. So, um, and so the first phrase is basically like, do not know one's place or social standing. So it kind of really establishes that these probably, um, this team is probably upperclassmen or like older kids that probably look down on you and bully you because you're like, you know, the juniors or whatever. It really plays into like this bully kind of thing where like they're older or like, you know, are kind of like senpais in a way. 
Um, and within Japanese, you're supposed to really respect your senpais. So it, it, that kind of element doesn't really translate within English text or even just Western um, standards because we really don't have that, like, we have a good respect your elders kind of thing, but we really don't have that with, like, older students, you know? Uh. So it'd be harder to translate, like, one's place or one's social standing because we really don't have that. Like, we have, like, some of, like, Oh, like the seniors or whatever, but we really don't have like we need to respect them because they're seniors, you know, kind of thing. Oh. And, um, and with Mila, I think it's very interesting because her thing is just one kind of word, which is a hazudo ya, which is like I'll burst you open, yeah, which is like very heavy where it's like i'm going to like destroy you pop you oh my god you. which with if you read the english text which is basically like prepare to be messed up that's so tame in comparison to like i'm going to burst you open oh my god yeah <laughs> no, these, and, no these are bullies these are bullies <laughs> it's very much for like that fits a very hardcore bully versus prepare to be messed up so it's just like, well, uh, the other text directly translates or it has like, you know, maybe some uniqueness to the translation because Japanese is a different language. It still translates directly. Well, there, the grunts and Mila's text is literally much harsher and a lot more sending home that these are bullies versus the English text where it's like, prepare to be messed up. We burn so bright because we're team star some kid get into the base where it's like no they're like they're like i'm going to burst you open like that's that's actually interesting that you mentioned like the seniority like it matters in the story or like it matters in the text that oh you can't disrespect us because we're the we're older and yeah yeah and, and also just the fact that we can get away with being a bully to you because yeah. we're your senpais, basically, uh -huh. or we're your seniors. Uh -huh. So you need to respect us or whatever, and we're allowed to, like, just, you know, bully you because of that. Yeah, I the English language, people, English language. It's not good translation. <laughs> we, yeah, we really <laughs> don't have the equivalent to what I, like, when I, because granted, I take my translation with a grain of salt because uh -huh. I'm not fluent in Japanese like I did take classes I did learn Japanese but I'm not to a level where I would say I'm fluent but from like what I got out of it when I was translating it was like oh this is much harsher language yeah and our equivalent to it would literally be if they were cursing which in the west we can't have cursing in Kennedy, so yeah I mean I, I I wish like that translation was better because oh prepared to what to bow in the English is prepare to be messed up. Yeah, prepare to be messed up compared to I'm gonna burst you. Like, come on. Like I, I, I that's what I was like saying earlier to Lime on like our um, text messages where it's like this is just so tame. I feel like even if you can't do curse words or whatever, you can definitely make it more harsher where you're like they are bullies. <laughs> Censors would allow you having actual bullies, I promise you. <laughs> Where you could have Mila be like, I can like hurt you, like I can like burn you up or whatever. Like, but granted, we only saw like three lines. But the differences between the Japanese three lines and the English three lines are just so, you know, there's a night and day difference. Nintendo. <laughs> English Nintendo, come on. <laughs> yeah, English Nintendo. I also thought one of the stories were involved the legendaries at all, or like what, how special they are, because usually within the evil team or just any story, there's usually some focus on the legendary. But from the three stories, it seems like there's just, it's not there, you know? Like, I don't know which story would have the legendaries within it or establish what they are. I mean, like, Path of Legends has legends, but I, f I feel like that's doubtful. Maybe the legendaries, you know, like, whatever their story is, is oh, just kind of a separate thing, and it's explored in, like, post-game or whatever, but I don't know. I mean, wait, like, there are biker gang, 
you have Maridon and Coridon. Maybe they want your bike. <laughs> <laughs> but would they know that we have a special bike versus a Cyclozar? <laughs> I mean, one's green, the other one's purple and red, so... <laughs> I'm gonna assume that, you know, I'm just gonna assume. We can uh, wrap it up and talk about our updated teams and any Ooh. Ooh. Okay, lingering okay. things we have that didn't fit in the other sections. Since I've talked a lot, <laughs> Mango, you can- Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> My Scarlet team so far is Fuecoco, Smoliv, Venonat, and Paldian Wooper. Those four, I feel like they're guaranteed. Like, I'll probably actively look for them. Sarah Lich, I mean, you can always trade me, like, you know, the first I'll, evolution I'll of it. Your, uh, your, if, it, if it does evolve, which I oh. it seems like it does, yeah. I'll trade it to you. Like, other Pokemon, I mean, I, they haven't been in the trailer, but I kind of want to use Yanma, Clobacus, Surskit, or Skitty. If they are, I, don't, I I feel like they're not, so Th that's my team so far. How about you, Pame? What's your team? Alright, well I had some drastic changes for mine because originally I had my Sprigatito team in Scarlet with Flakeco being a Violet, but I had to switch it up because I love Cerule Edge a little bit more, even though I love Psychic types. Um, so, I actually have my Sprigatito team in Violet now, while my Fuku team is in Scarlet. Mm. And so far with my Violet, I have Sprigatito, Fido, uh, Titan, and I'm gonna have Grafai, because I love Grafai, <laughs> and Cerule Edge. And then we'll have to figure out a 6 Pokemon, uh, hopefully we get more Pokemon revealed. <laughs> and then for Scarlet, so far it's still Flakeco and Swallow, because none of the other ones really, you know, like, I'll consider them. But I'm hoping that there's more unique designs um, or just more unique Pokemon than what they are. Unless they evolve into something cool. We ha there's a lot of different candidates so far, even though we only have so little Pokemon reveal. All for I love most of them, so it's like really hard to decide who I want in my teams and everything. Especially my Violet, it's very Tito team. I'm already at my fifth Pokemon and I'm like, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> Who's gonna be my last one? I don't know. <laughs> like I think what I did with Sword and Shield, I'll probably do with Scarlet and Violet, and like rotate my team, especially because you can take the gems in any order. So I'll probably like rotate them. So but that's I like fair. that'll be fun. For me, I just like having one set solid team. I don't like yeah. to exchange the one out if I have to. So that's what makes it harder for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like rare. Okay, we won't have like the flying and swimming features until mm -hmm. like later, I think. So you can't find like rare Pokemon until you have those. So yeah, it depends on what like you know how it breaks down, like mm -hmm. the encounters and everything. I mean, to be fair, they're actually I didn't talk about this in the other sections. But from what the maps seem like, if you look on the, like the map sections, it seems like if you encounter Pokemon Center, you can fast travel to it, which is very convenient because... <laughs> oh, you can just fly? Well, no, no, or... not fly, but it'll fast travel you. So like, let's like, for example, uh -huh. like in Pokemon Legends Arceus in the map, like the camps you could fast travel to. Uh -huh. Like you could just be like, I want to go back to camp. And it'll immediately take you oh, back to camp. Oh, that's what you meant. That's why I meant where like you can go like fast travel or go back to a Pokemon Center or go to a Pokemon Center you've already visited. Okay, thank God. Okay. Which is like yeah, I'm, like so convenient. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay. I love that little like a quality of life change where it's like yes, yeah. I can just go to somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, like we need more of that. We need like improve change. Let's keep it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's it for our third video discussing the latest news on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below as well as your future teams or any interesting theories you thought of yourself. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more media coverage, especially for Pokemon. And follow our Twitter for video updates and our little tweets. We also started our TikTok. When you get a chance, please check it out. Um, we mostly post funny clips and exclusive bloopers on there, so if you want something to laugh about, please check out Cherry on Top on TikTok. 
This has been Cherry on Top. And as always, we hope you enjoy your Sunday. Bye! I'm home. Wait. Where is everybody? <laughs>